Welcome to another Mass Transit video. This is going to be a short series on using Azure Service Bus. I know a lot of the episodes I do use RabbitMQ, and I wanted to take a break and kind of show some of the, the differences and unique features of Azure Service Bus when it comes to configuring Mass Transit. So let's just jump in and get started. I'm using the Mass Transit Azure namespace for this, and I'll jump into the details in that. First, I want to show you the structure of the sample. The sample has two services. One is an API and another one is a worker service. Uh, there is also an assembly that has the message contracts in it. And what I'm going to go through first is the API service. Now, the API is just a standard web API template. I've taken out the boilerplate stuff and I've put in the add mass transit uh, segment within the startup CS. Uh, I set the endpoint name formatter because I like kebab case. And I put in using Azure Service Bus. Now this is the API service. There aren't any consumers or sagas or anything in it. And it uses a very simple connection string out of the app settings JSON, which you can update in the sample to your own Azure Service Bus connection string. And it uses the add mass transit hosted service. So we ensure that the bus is started when the API project starts. And in this case, we're using the add generic request client. And this lets us use a request client in our controllers without knowing up front what request types we want to send. Now, the controller in this is pretty simple. It's an order controller. We're sticking with the order metaphor. It, the consumer is going, to, it's going to send a submit order to the requests receiver. So I'm using an I request client of submit order. And then when a put is done to the Swagger endpoint, I'm mapping that request to do a get response of order submission accepted, sending the submit order request, and then waiting for that to come back, and then returning an accepted 202 response to that put. So that's all there is on the API side. Now let's look at the worker side. The worker side is using a new .NET 5 worker template, so I just did a .NET new of worker. And I've added the mass transit dependencies, and I have the mass transit uh, set up here within the container. I'm using the same endpoint name formatter. I'm also adding two separate consumers. In this case, a submit order consumer and an order submitted consumer. Now, obviously the first consumer is gonna handle the submit order command that we're producing from the request client. And the other consumer is gonna consume an event called order submitted. Now, one of the questions I get a lot with Azure Service Bus is when should I use a subscription endpoint versus a receive endpoint? Because mass transit is designed around queues and then topics and exchanges to produce messages, when you create a receive endpoint, it's always going to be a queue. Well, Azure Service Bus has the capability to create subscriptions on topics that behave like queues. So you're able to receive and consume messages directly from that subscription. So to demonstrate that, I'm configuring a subscription endpoint, in this case for the order submitted event, and I'm specifying a name for the subscription, and then I'm configuring that order submitted consumer on that subscription endpoint. Now this is gonna do two things. It's gonna pre-configure the subscription endpoint for Azure Service Bus, and it's gonna register that consumer on it. It's also gonna mark that consumer as already having been configured. So when I call configure endpoints, it won't create an endpoint, AKA a queue, for the order submitted consumer as it's been flagged as already configured and therefore won't be configured again. So the order matters here because I want these subscription endpoints to pull those consumers out of the registration so that when I go to configure endpoints, the only remaining consumer, in this case, the submit order consumer, is left to be configured. So when I run this, and I'm just gonna run it from the console, and I obviously didn't size that to the right size, um, I'm gonna run that from the console and we're gonna see that kick up, and it's gonna see that we configured that subscription endpoint, we configured our endpoint, and the bus is started. If we go out here and look at Azure, we're going to see that I have two topics, one for order submitted, which is the event being produced, and then one for the submit order, which is the command being requested from the API endpoint. And if we look at submit order first, we can see that there is one subscription called submit order, which if we look at that and we can't see it entirely in here, it's actually gonna forward those messages to, you can see, submit order, which is a queue. So a little bit of name overload, but basically that subscription called submit order is gonna forward the messages to the submit order queue. And if I clip on that, you can see, enable forward to queue topic and it's forwarded to the submit order queue. 
Now, if I go back and look at that other topic, which this is always weird to me, the order submitted event, here I have, there's no forwarding, and the subscription I have is the order submitted consumer, which is that sub subscription that I created. It isn't forwarding messages, and they're being consumed directly from that subscription. So if I go back into here, and I look in here, and I go back to queues, I can see that the queue created is the submit order queue for that submit order consumer. And it's just configured however it's configured, the defaults, delivery count, whatever. So now if I come back into my project and I'm gonna run the web sample web API, hit F5, it's gonna bring it up. Remember, I already have that worker service running in the background. So now I can go into the Swagger UI, and in this case, I'm gonna put the order using an order ID and an order number, and I'm gonna call execute, and I'm gonna come down here, and it's still running, still running, still running, and ultimately it comes back with a 202, order ID, order was accepted. And if I go out and look at the console, I can see right here that that order was, this order submission was received, and the order submitted event was also consumed by that consumer. So everything worked as we expected. If I were to go in and change this number and do another one real quick, we'll see that now that it comes back super fast, the first request, it always takes a while to start up the response endpoint, which now if we go back and look at the queues within this namespace, we will see that there is one more queue, which is the My Computer Sample API, this is the bus endpoint that's used to handle that response from the submit order command. Whereas if we go to the submit order consumer, we're able to see that it consumes, writes out a message, publishes that order submitted event, and then if we are looking for a response, it will respond with that order submission accepted event, or uh, response back to the request client in the controller. So that's a pretty basic Azure Service Bus configuration. We're also using a subscription endpoint in that. I'll follow this up with a few other videos, just kind of showing some of the intricate features of Azure Service Bus and how you can use things like sessions and change topic names, other things like that. So I hope you found this useful. The sample will be up on GitHub and uh, enjoy. Talk to you later.